Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we're doing the Biology Core Practicals. This is Core Practical 13, investigating the rate of growth of microorganisms in a culture, taking into account the safe and ethical use of organisms. I'm going to begin by looking at safety precautions. You need to wear eye protection, keep the Brunson flame away from the flammable substances. This includes the ethanol or alcohol used to sterilize the surfaces. You must culture using aseptic techniques like sterile equipment and wear gloves. You need to incubate cultures at temperatures below body temperature to prevent culture of pathogenic bacteria. Disinfect workspaces before and after the experiment and you should safely destroy cultures by autoclaving at the end of the experiment. In this experiment, stability measurements can be used in order to quantify the number of bacteria or microorganisms within a culture. You have to keep in mind that stability can give us total count of bacteria, including those that are not living. So some other methods like hemocytometry, dilution plating can be used if you wanna quantify only microorganisms that are living. Because this experiment is considering culture in liquid medium, the preculture could be on solid medium or it could be in another liquid medium. You will get a sample from there and then inoculate into the liquid culture. And after 24 hours, we can see there is gonna be turbidity that can be observed. So most of the time, if you chose a full colony, there is gonna be greater turbidity in comparison to this one. But of course, that depends on the concentration of the initial solution after inoculation. In this experiment, like I said already, we can use the turbidometry method or we can use the dilution plating culture in order to quantify the number of microorganisms. You could also use turbidometry accompanied by hemocytometry in order to get accurate results. If you are using the turbidity method, the greater the turbidity of the liquid culture, the higher the concentration of microorganisms, so turbidity is measured at regular intervals. In this experiment, the dependent variable is the number of microorganisms per specific time, so you need to use aseptic techniques, washing hands with soap, disinfecting surfaces, and using a Bunsen flame and minimizing exposure to air. Then inoculate the flask containing the liquid microbial growth medium, with the same concentration of microorganisms. Use a star, this could be a magnetic star to ensure uniform concentration of microorganisms. This is immediately after inoculation. You could then place cotton wool in the mouth of the flask or loosely cover the mouth of the flask with aluminum foil. This is similar to what we see here. This is cotton wool in the mouth of the flask. Ensure that all variables like temperature, pH, the number of microorganisms inoculated, the volume of the liquid medium are kept constant. Then incubate the flask at a specific temperature, periodically sample and quantify to find the optical density in order to correspond with the number of microorganisms in the sample. You can calculate the growth rate by dividing the number of microorganisms per specific time. And here experiments can be repeated multiple times in order to get a mean value. When using a colorimeter, you need to fill a sterile cuvette with glucose solution this should be similar to the concentration of the one used in the culture. This is about the culture medium. Place this in a calorimeter as a blank to set the absorbance of the calorimeter to zero. This could be kept in the refrigerator after use. Then you periodically take samples from the culture solution and mix appropriately. Then you transfer to a cuvette and that cuvette should be put in a calorimeter. Then measure the absorbance and record the results in a suitable table of results. You need to repeat this for at least five different times for the next about 12 hours during the culture. It is not advisable to sample after 12 hours because waste accumulation and lack of nutrients could hinder the growth of microorganisms. You could also use hemocytometry like I already said to estimate the initial density of the cells in the culture as well as the estimation of the density of cells at any time during the culture so that you can correlate the results from hemocytometry with a corresponding optical density so that the curve drawn can be used to estimate the number of microorganisms at any point during the culture without going back to use hemocytometry. Sometimes we can use the dilution plating like we see here. We dilute every time and plate, and in the end we can count the number of microorganisms by looking at the individual colonies. If the colonies can be distinguished completely or properly, that means each colony was originally one bacterium. So we can use that to estimate or to calculate the number of microorganisms that were in the original solution. 
For example, here from this plate, they can count 159 colonies, and that means the bacteria here are 159, but because they've carried out three dilutions, it's going to be 159 times 10 power 3. These are the number of cells per millimeter of the original sample. So this brings us to the end of this video. This is Core Practical 13. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.